Welcome to Judah Tree Ministries. This is the Apostle Brian Childs with Calling the Remnant, a broadcast of Judah Tree Ministries. Hey, I hope that you've had a blessed week so far, that you are walking strong in the Lord, and by the power of His might, you are doing all that heaven has called you to do. Amen? So today, I really want to encourage you. I want to tell you by the Spirit of the Lord that there is a lifting up to all those who are called by his purpose and called by his name. I want to tell you that there is a lifting up for those who are pursuing God, who are pursuing his, his presence, who are pursuing his face. See, what Satan would have you do is spend all your time focused on the battle, all your time Focus on the host that seems like it is a raid on some great high place against you. But see, the Bible says that there's anointing in us. That there's a spirit in us. And that the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit of the Lord God gives us inspiration. So right now I'm breathing on that inspiration. I'm breathing on that part of you, which is spirit, which was remade after the image of Jesus Christ to tell you that there is a lifting up in Jesus. There's a lifting up in the spirit of God. But child believer, you have to get your eyes off the host that's arrayed against you. See, and get your eyes on Yeshua, get your eyes on God. Now, there's a story in the book of Judges I want to go into. It's a story about a man named Samson who, who was a mighty man of valor for God. Now, he wasn't a prophet, but yet he had a relationship with God. He wasn't a priest, a preacher, but yet he was a soldier for God. See? And just like in the days of Samson, in these times, there are those who God has called unto himself that you're, you're not a priest and, and you're not a preacher, but yet you have a relationship with God and God hears you when you speak and you hear him when he speaks back to you and he's called you into a place of intimacy, see, of intimacy. And that place of, in, of intimacy is where you get your strength, see. That, that place where you're one-on-one you're, you're, you're -on -one with God. Mm -hmm. you're, you're flowing in the Holy Spirit. Instead of crying, you're praising. Instead of worrying, you're worshiping, see. It's that place of intimacy where God is able to revive you again. He's able to blow on the purpose and the call and the destiny that he's birthed in your spirit by the prophetic word spoken through the mouth of a prophet, spoken through the mouth of a preacher, given to you in a dream, hmm. given you in a vision. Hmm. See, you might not be called, as they say, but you're still called. You still not, you might not be a five-fold ministry gift. Yet you're still chosen. See? And it's you who God has sent me to today to encourage. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. Judges chapter 15, verse 9. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, why you come up against us? And they answered, to bind Samson are we come up to do him as he have done us. Now the, now, the crazy thing is that the enemy pitch itself in praise. See, Satan and his horde wants to get you to stop praising God because he knows if you praise him, God will show up. See, he knows if you worship him, if you worship Yeshua, if you worship the Lord and the high and the lofty one, that he will show up and every demon and every, every plot and every slander will be broken off your life. So Satan tries to pitch himself in your praise. He tries to pitch himself in everything that God has called you to. But you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry. You don't even have to wonder. All you have to do is worship the Lord. 
Amen. Because he promised us in the book of Psalms that he will inhabit the praises of his people. Now watch this. Hmm. And the men of Judah said, why are you come up against us? And the, and the, and the Philistines answered, to bind Samson are we come up to do him as he have done unto us. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock, Etham, and said to Samson, know you not that the Philistines are rulers over us. Now, now think about that. I, I want to add this in, in, in this text. Here you are in Israel. You've been led to the promised land by Moses, the man of God, and taken in and possessed the land by Joshua, the precursor and type of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. And through your disobedience, your lethargy, your lawlessness, your greed, your lust, you've allowed Satan to get you in a place of a backslidden state to the point where you're now being ruled by those you're supposed to conquer. And you're so far removed from God that you're ready to do the bidding of the devil to bind the one that's chosen. My God, my God. So what does Samson say to those who allowed the wicked, the uncircumcised, those without a covenant to be their rulers? I, I need you to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. See, as a member of the body of Christ, the only leader you're supposed to have is Yeshua. As a member of the body of Christ who has a more perfect covenant, a more sure word of prophecy. The only leader we're supposed to have is Jesus the Christ. Sickness is not supposed to lead us. Mm. Adultery is not supposed to lead us. Mm. Lust is not supposed to lead us. Come on. Come on. Poverty is not supposed to lead us. Traditions and religiosity of man is not supposed to lead you as a member of the body of Christ. But here we see the church being led and claiming the rulers as those who were wicked. Mm, mm, mm. Now watch this. Then 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of Rock Edom and said to Samson, Know thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that you have done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so I have done unto them. No, 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 no. Watch the spirit of religion. How, how are you going to sit there in your anointing and believe God for a new house? a better running vehicle, a more powerful ministry, a city to be saved. How, how are you going to talk and walk and act like God hears you? How are you going to talk and walk and act like if you lay hands on somebody, they're going to be healed? Who do you think that you are? Hmm? 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 See, religious people, they never want to see you do what God's called you to do, because when you press out and follow the master, mm -hmm. when you press out and get out of the boat and walk on the water and follow Jesus, it's going to make them look like they really don't believe. So as long as you're there, oh, Shonda, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, inside the walls and going to the doctor every time you have a hiccup and taking some pain medication every time you feel pain. And going to a therapist every time you get depressed. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know if you're shouting, but I know I'm preaching. <laughs> and acting like the world, thinking like the world, moving like the world. Then surely you don't want somebody else who's a champion in God to do what heaven has called them to do. 
Why? Because people are going to look at you and say, well, how come you ain't healing? How come you ain't casting out devils? How come you ain't seeing gold dust on the floor? How come you ain't seeing the power of God fall? How come you're not seeing heavenly creatures manifest? How come you ain't? How come you ain't? How come you? See, it's easy to be religious. See, but it's a hard thing. It's a challenging thing. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that costs you something. I hear, I hear Apostle Ron say, a process. See, it's going to cost you something to believe God beyond belief. To believe that what he said, he's doing it now even though your eyes cannot see it. That the things he told you you're going to possess, you're going to possess it because he said it even though your eyes can't see it. He told you you're going to own your own home, but yet it looks like you're five steps away from being homeless. He told you you're going to have your own business, but it looks like it's rocky on your job and your manager don't even really like you. See, when you're walking in God and, and when you're revived in spirit and you have faith in the Holy Ghost, you really don't care about what you see because you understand that what you see is subject to change. But the word of God that is spoken over your life is steadfast and sure and unremovable and will last and will fulfill everything that God has spoken over your life. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. And they said unto him, we have come down to bind you. Whew, sound like the devil. That we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. See, I'd rather that the world fall upon me than my brothers and sisters who are supposed to be in the church. See? They're already going to hell. Why do you want to put yourself in that predicament? It'll come to you in a minute. And they spake unto him, saying, No, but we will bind you fast and deliver you into their hand. But surely we will not kill you. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the spirit of the Lord came mildly upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax, that was burnt with fire and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, a new jawbone, found a new anointing, found a new virtue, got a new word, received a new prophecy, got strength put in his hand, got authority put in his hand. Hallelujah. And took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, Heaps upon heaps with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking. That he cast with a jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramoth Lehi. Mm -hmm. And he was sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance unto the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water. Almighty God is telling me to tell you right now that God will take what you have in your hand and make it more than what somebody can give you. God will take what you have in your hand and put his anointing upon it, and you will, ooh, you will do signs and wonders. You will build more than one business. The doors of opportunity are open unto you. He will put himself in the jawbone of an ass. He'll put himself in that what you have in your hand. I don't care if it's cooking. I, I, I don't care if it's working on cars. I don't care if it's cleaning a house. I don't care what it is, but whatever it is that God put in your hand, use it because with that thing that God has put in your hand, I'm telling you by the Spirit of the Lord, you will do exploits in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What do you have in your hand? See, sometimes we have to stop looking at what we don't have and look at what we do have. And God is so much God, he's so much higher than we are, that he can take what we have in our hand, even though it's a little thing, and make something big out of it, because he's God. All you have to do is believe. Hallelujah. All you have to do is believe. And be that people that know their God. Because those who know their God will do exploits. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. 
But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereof. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. He revived. He revived. He revived. Now look at this. Look, 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 look. Look right here. Look. The depressed people, the sad people, always complaining people, always murmuring people. Those aren't the ones that are going to go into the land with you. See, those are the ones whose eyes are not on the high and lofty ones. Their eyes are on the circumstances of the day. Every headline is what's in their heart. Every breakup, everything of gossip, everything of murmuring, everything of complaining, every hard thing, they keep reciting and keep reciting and keep speaking and keep speaking. See, they're not declaring what says the Lord. They're not doing what the apostle Paul said to Timothy, which was take that word which has gone forth on you through the presbytery and, 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 and the anointing which was upon you by the land on my hands and use that to make your warfare. They're not making a warfare out of what God has said. They're consistently reciting what the world has said, what the devil has said, what negative circumstances have said. Cut them away from you. See, they, see everybody can't go when, you, when you're called to go. So the Bible says few, the Bible says many are called. See, the invitation has gone out to a whole lot of people. But not everybody will do the work to become what he said. See, see. He calls you while you're in the muck. He calls you while you're in the mire. He calls you when you're downtrodden. He calls you to give you a hope for a future and an end of expectation. But then he wants you to press in that word so you could become it. See, see, I used to be defeated, but now I'm a victor. I used to be homeless, but now I have a house. Watch. I used to be a, a gangster. Now I'm a preacher. I used to chase women. Now I chase the Holy Ghost. I used to be depressed, but now I walk behind Jesus Christ and I continually have victory because I walk in him and behind him is a train of his triumph and I'm consistently walking and wrapping myself in the triumphs of the Lord until they're my triumphs. I'm going to give you a moment to think about that. See, see, are you pressing into the Lord? Or are you reciting what Satan has said? Do you see yourself huh, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Or do you only look and see the ray of the enemy all around about you to your point where you can't see the angels that are covering them? Whew. See, it might seem like Satan has covered you. But bless, baby, understand, there's more with us than there is with them. Now watch it. Let's do some math. When Satan was Lucifer, he that covered by means of worship, dew would fall from heaven and water the earth. That was the epitome of his power. That was the epitome of his anointing. To water grass. He was the, long, he was the landscaper of heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he was never God, never made in the God class. He was a landscaper of heaven. He watered the herbs and, 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 and the forestry that God had created for man. Now watch this. He began in pride. Thank you, Jesus. To start looking around at all that heaven had. Looking around at all that God had created. Seeing the, the plans and the prototype for the man Adam, ish, that was to come. See. And he said, no, 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 no. I will be like the most high. No, not man. 
No, not man. No, not man. No, not man. No, I, I will. I, I will. Like a spoiled little child, I will, I will be like the most high God. I will set my kingdom over in the place of the north. I will sit in the seat of, of, of God. And I will. And at that second, to his deception, a third of angels fell. A third. Well, baby, that means two thirds are right here on my side. That, mean, that means I'm fighting a two for one. That means no matter how many demons come at me, there's more angels with me than there are devils coming from hell. That means that in Jesus Christ, I am more than a conqueror. That means that there's nothing that can stop me from possessing the land that the Holy Ghost has spoken to me through the mouth of a prophet. Are you, are you getting it? See, this thing that the enemy wants you to believe, that the church is in a struggle, that we're in this fight against good and, 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 and bad and, 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 <laughs> and holiness and wickedness, as if there's a battle. No, no, no. The only battle that we're fighting is the battle of our own souls, of our own minds, of our own wills, of our own emotions. Will we allow our soul to submit to the word of God and be led by the spirit of God so we can do what God has called us to do? Because if God has spoken, no one can bring it back. If God has said it, no one can stop it from, bringing, from, from coming to pass. Amen? Now watch this. My time is running out. Psalms, Psalms 138. We're going to close in a minute. Psalms 1, I hope this is good. <laughs> Psalms 138, verse 7. Verse 6. Though the Lord be high, yet has he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. See, the, the first step to be revived in God is to be humble. See, the, the first step you have to take to pursue a a, a, a road and a destiny of greatness is to be the servant of all. See, to be humble. Now, humility is not you walk around shuffling like, like an old Hebrew slave. That's not humility. That's not humility. That's foolishness. That's a lack of understanding the value that God has placed in you when he sent his son to the earth to shed his blood for you. See, now watch this. Humility to bow yourself beneath the mighty hand of God means you walk in obedience to what he says. That's true humility. So you're not humble if you're called to be a fivefold minister and you're working in a ministry of helps. That's disobedience. See, you're, you're, <laughs> you're not humble if you're called to work in the ministry of helps, but you're trying to be a fivefold ministry gift, don't have the anointing, and you're running people's lives amok because the anointing of God is not in you for that. Humility is being what God has called you to be. Humility is identifying yourself with who God said you are and saying, yes, God, that's who I am, and now I will become it. I will press in your presence and press in your purpose and press in your word until I become it. I'm no longer what I used to be in the past. I'm no longer what my mama used to say about me. I'm no longer what my daddy said about me. I'm no longer what my friends call me. I'm no matter what the people in my class call me. I'm not that. I'm what you have said. I have become it. Mm-hmm. Like Jesus Christ in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, he says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book you have written of me. Sacrifices and offerings you would not have. But a body you have prepared for me. I've become the sacrifice. Father, Father, I've become the sacrifice. I'm ready to be mm, offered. Why? Because Yeshua came submitted to the word of the Father to the point where he went to die. See, that's humility. See, first step to greatness, humility. Second step to greatness, 
Obedience. Do what he tells you to do. Because in the, in the asking you to do, he's planted the provision and the revelation of the plan as you walk step by step, as you press day by day, as you abide in him moment by moment. That's where it all is. See, he was a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. In other words, the children of Israel were supposed to follow him, not get ahead of him, but to follow him. <coughs> now watch this. First seven. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord shall, verse 8, perfect, mature, keep that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. God has made you. And God has made you perfect. This is not a time to be depressed. This is not a time to be in doubt. This is a time to be lifted up in the name of Jesus. So believer, <clears throat> stop looking at what you see around you and press into Jesus. Stop listening to the voice of those who are not aligned with Yeshua. Stop listening to the voice that does not line up with this book. Wrap yourself in the word of God. Abide in Yeshua and he'll abide in you and you'll ask what you will and he will give it to you because you're walking in purpose, you're walking in humility, and you're walking in obedience. Amen? Amen. Wait, this has been another broadcast of Calling the Remnant. Thank you for joining us. I have service on Sundays at 11 a.m. at 6450. I believe that's the address. 6450. South 23rd Street. It's off of St. Catherine and 24th Street, just west of 24th Street on 23rd. Okay? 60, 6540 South 23rd Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85042. Judah Tree Ministries. Service begins at 11 a.m. We'd love to see you on Sunday. Amen? If you need prayer, call 602 295-3069 will cover you in prayer and believe that God's word will be manifest in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, we love you. We'll talk to you soon. Until next time, God bless.